Now there's some questions we need to answer in advance here. I'll go through them quickly because I want to get on the floor with, with these guys. As a kid, I can remember watching Wilkes go to Final Fours, thinking, man, it'd be cool to coach there. Today's my day, boys. Today's my day. So first question I already asked you, are you willing to be confrontational? You're going to have to be. Um, what shots are you willing to give up? What shots are you willing to give up? If you don't know what shots you want to give up, how do you build your defense? What shots are you willing to give up? For us, very simple. We start with this goal, no, non-paint twos. That's what we want to give up, non-paint twos. So what are we talking about? This dark, darker wooded area here. We start with that in mind. We're going to build this thing non-paint twos. No rhythm threes, nothing at the rim where they're getting second shots, fouls, high percentage shots at the rim. Non-paint twos. That's our goal. Do your, understand, do your players understand what's important to you on defense? Do you have core values? Uh, some folks call them non-negotiables. We call them constants. Okay, there are five things. Our players know they're the most important things to us, and we believe if we do these things consistently, then we will force our opponents into the shots that we want, because it all comes back to that. Do you want to hear what ours are? Yours can be totally different, but I'll give you what ours are. Um, we start with, and this is cheating, I said five, it's actually six, but we rolled two into one. The first most important thing for us is to have vision and voice. That's the most important thing to us on defense. Everybody close your eyes, please. Please close your eyes. Try not to fall asleep. Okay, keep your eyes closed. How many fingers do I have up? Four. You have your eyes open. You proved my point. The only guy in here who knew the stinking answer was cheating. He had his eyes open. Okay, so open your eyes. How many fingers I got up? It's easy when you can see it. Am I right or am I wrong? So that's rule number one for us. If you can't see it, you can't do it. I don't care how good you are. If you can't see it, you can't do it. And if you can't speak it, we can't do it. What good is it for you to see it and not tell everybody else? Or conversely, what good is it for you to speak it if I'm not seeing it? So those two things to me are linked. And they're the number one most important thing in our defense, our constants. If you're going to make a mistake on defense, that's probably why. You didn't see it, you didn't speak it. So that's number one. Number two constant for us, constant ball pressure. I think the biggest uh, misconception about pack line defense is that it's a non-pressure defense. That's bull. That's bull. If it's played correctly, there should be more ball pressure than in any other defense. Why? Because we have everybody else behind the ball. You should be able to put added pressure on the basketball. Now, we're not out denying passes, but the person with the ball should be under duress at all times. We've got four people behind you. Go get them. So that's important to us, ball pressure. For us, and this will be, uh, this is different for us, I get it. We force, we can't. So number three on our list of constants, no strong hand. This goes a little bit against the pack line, no strong hand. Try it. Your first day, you're going to be like, we can't do it. It's like one and five out. You're they can't do it. They can't do it. Just keep doing it. Hold them accountable. Do it. Hold them accountable. I promise you, you're going to win more games if your opponents are shooting weak hand shots. I promise you. And here's the other thing. Forget weak hand shots. If I drive the ball here, I'm right-handed. Okay? Especially in my sport, right? Women not as strong as men, generally speaking. How, you know how many men, women on my team? We have a good team. A very good team. You know how many women on my team can pass the ball from here to that corner without stopping, picking it up, and pivoting? I got one, and we're good. The bad teams don't even have one. You know how many girls on my team can do this? All of them. 
All of them. So get your opponents punching you with their weak hand. You won't feel it as much. You won't feel it as much, I promise you. Don't foul. I talked about what fouling does. So fourth for us, do not foul. We harp on that every day. And then obviously one and done. Rebounding becomes critical. We start every practice with a rebounding drill. Every practice. Now, there are different ones. There's different contact level. Day before the game, it might be tip drill. But it's the idea, if we're building a mindset, a culture, a belief system that we're going to win on defense, I shouldn't come to your practice and the first 30 minutes are rhythm jumpers. Okay? I would argue your identity isn't defense if the first half hour, 45 minutes, dribble out kicks for jumpers. Those things are great. We do them all the time. But to me, your identity is built in the first half hour, 40 minutes of your practice. Your kids walk on the court. This is what we do. You may disagree with me that that should be defense. That's fine. But don't tell me it's, all, it's defense and come out and shoot jumpers for 35 minutes. You just set the tone for that practice, in my opinion. So rebounding, we, we harp on it one shot and done for the obvious reasons, but I also think it plays into the mentality and mindset of what you do. Uh, question, what do we do as basketball players, teams, what things are done at both ends of the court? There's only two really big things that we do at both ends of the court. Anybody know what they are? Rebound is one. It's gotta be important, you do it at both ends, right? So we don't emphasize the offensive as much. You'd be shocked how many we get with the numbers that we send. Anybody know the other one? At least in my opinion? Talk, right? Somebody get, let me learn, let me learn. What, what else would you say you do at both ends of the court? Other than rebound and talk. You play hard, I know all that stuff, true. Anybody, anybody give me anything I can add to the list? So if, the, if we're saying those two things are done at, the most, they be, uh, at both ends, we better harp on them. So vision and voice, ball pressure, constant ball pressure, no strong hand, don't foul, one and done, that's us. If you went to my players right now, we've been practicing an hour, four hours a week since June, they would be able to tell you that by heart. It's hanging in their lockers, um, they know it, they know it. But if your players don't know what's important to you, how are they gonna be good? How are they gonna be good at it? You gotta tell them what's important. And then lastly, do you have clear, concise language with the things that you do? Do you name everything? Coach names everything. Do you name everything at the defensive end? Does every position on the floor have a name? Is it constant and concise and clear? Because you may call it help side and then your assistant that's making 1500 bucks calls it weak side. Are they the same to us? Sure, we understand it. Is it the same to our kids? Maybe not. Maybe not. So you have to decide what language are you going to use and speak it all the time from everybody. From the head coach to the film guy, if you have one. Clear, concise language. Any questions?